All right. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm not sure how many folks we have online right now, but my name is Art McDermott, and today we're going to talk about stretching. Before we jump into that, a few little housekeeping things. Uh, number one, if you have questions, and I hope you do, uh, I uh, the way I have my presentation set up here, I can't see the chat box directly. So how I've structured it is we're going to wrap up probably eight minutes. I'm going to target like eight minutes early, and I can go through the chat box and we'll answer questions. So please, so you don't forget it. You might want to you know throw it down there in the chat box, and I'll try to work my way through everything. Um, and I'm happy to you know stay on the line if if, if need be to answer your questions. I want to make sure that everyone has all the information they need. Um, so that'll be the plan. And, and so you figure about just around 20 after or so, I will wrap up the slides. I'm, I'm sure I can get through this material in that time. And then we can dive into some questions. Uh, a little bit of background on for me. Uh, again, my, game, my name is Art McDermott. I've been in the fitness and wellness industry for well over 30 years. I spent quite a bit of time on uh, in the corporate fitness world, and we'll, I'll make those references a lot. Um, I am here representing Car Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare today, and um, my, I'm a certified strength and conditioning specialist and a certified nutritionist, and I have a side certification, which relates directly to this presentation today, in office ergonomics. So that's uh, definitely going to be coming up here and there throughout the presentation. So uh, I'm going to dive right into this. And again, um, I, I won't pause to do questions during the presentation, just so everyone can take a look at these slides. And in the description, it talks quite a bit about upper body stuff, right? Upper body stretching, flexibility, and movement. But I also included, as you'll see, some lower body stuff because it's just too important to ignore. So that's why I want to keep the pace moving along pretty quickly. All right, so let's uh, let's dive in here. So first of all, the question is, why bother stretching? Why can't you just sit and get your work done and go home? Say, so, well, muscles still tighten up. Muscles are very, very funky little organs. Say they like to do their own thing. As we know, if you ever torn something, you know that like there was no reason for that. It just did it. Like, muscles kind of have a mind of their own and they like to tighten up a lot. Um, there's a lot of uh, physiology going on here and we'll try to touch on a lot of that right now. So what can make muscles tighten up even more? Um, well, first of all, staying in the same position for a long time. If you think about it, uh, oh, 50 years ago, which is pretty recent in, in as far as our bodies are concerned, is the uh, we didn't do a lot of staying in the same position. They didn't have computer screens that you stared at. So there was a lot more movement and up and down and, and life was a bit more physical than we deal with today. So, but now we show up, we sit down and it's very common for us to be staring at a screen for six to eight hours, which is extremely unhealthy. And the unfortunate part is that you get some muscles that tighten, some muscles that stop functioning properly because they're not being used at all. So there's quite a bit of problem with staying uh, in the same position for a long period of time. It's very, very counter to human physiology. It's not normal for us to do that. And that's why our bodies are having such trouble with it. Uh, doing repetitive motions. You've heard this before, carpal tunnel syndrome, things like that. Uh, when you do motions over and over and over again, again, we're not really designed to do that very well. So you get inflammation and you get tightness and you get injury and, and tendonitis and all these kind of things. So doing repetitive motions will make muscles tighten up and malfunction. And of course, there's the stress of work itself. You, you are under pressure, you've got deadlines, you've got expectations to fulfill. And so your, your body, that stress is, it, it varies from person to person, but largely focuses in your neck and shoulders and, and arms. And that stress of the work is, is impossible to avoid. And then some things are, are a little more under our control, poor ergonomics. If we don't take the time to adjust the height of the chair, the height of the desk, you'd be surprised the massive impact this has on whether you avoid injuries or not. All right, a friend of mine, I just saw him at a social event on Sunday, just had carpal tunnel syndrome on one hand and he's getting it on the other next month. All right, and it's probably over the course of time, you know, probably, probably avoidable. Uh, we'll talk about that today and some of the stretches we're gonna do, but um, it's a real thing. If you're in the wrong position for a long period of time, you can expect some long-term impact, okay? And of course, 
if you've injured yourself or you had a surgery or orthopedic style surgery, you have probably altered how you sit, how you stand, how you hold yourself as you sit. Those kind of things uh, are impacted by your past uh, injury and surgical history. So let's look at another reason. So his, what's gonna happen over time is muscles will adapt to their new position over time. And it'll become extremely difficult to return to normal lengths and firing patterns. That's a very long-winded way of saying like, if you sit and if you're in a poor position, overuse, any of those things we just mentioned, your muscles start to fire differently. Like they're not used to that. They're not used to sitting still. So some muscles, as I mentioned, some muscles will shut down. They'll literally shut down. And we don't have the time to go into the whole physiology of that today. But if you don't use it, that muscle will shut down. And other ones are used so constantly that they tighten up because they're overused. So, and that we have changed the length of the muscle and the firing patterns, which is not a good thing, right? That's never a good thing. So let's jump into the rules of stretching. I remember when I was a kid in PE classes, they would intentionally have us bouncing. If you remember that, I'm, I'm in my 50s. And so PE class, when they actually used to have it, um, but the stretching was bouncing. They never knew about static stretching and damage to the tendon. They didn't know any of that. So you would bounce stretch all the time and all this. So never bounce, right? This is a slow controlled stretch. And we'll, once we get to the stretches, you'll see what I mean. Um, stretching should be uncomfortable, never painful. This is not a situation where it's no pain, no gain. If a stretch is, un is painful, you are going too far. And that usually happens with, if you're trying to go beyond the normal range of motion, or if the muscle's very cold, right? You haven't warmed up a little bit. So we'll talk about that before we dive into the stretches. Please remember, you should probably have, be breathing a little heavier. I'm not saying necessarily have to have a big sweat going or anything, but if you're gonna do some stretching, it's okay to get up, maybe do a lap around the building, up and down a couple of hallways, just to get the breathing going a little bit. And then, so the muscles are, are already been moving. Okay, so that's going to help you not stretch a cold muscle. We'll talk about that again in a second, as you can see, number five there. Um, the stretching we're going to do today, I won't be too repetitive in saying it every single time, but we want to hold stretches for 30 seconds. Why 30 seconds? Well, muscles, like I said, have a mind of their own, and it takes them about 30 seconds to figure out they're being stretched. Like if, you, if I just take my hamstring or take my wrist or something, and I do a quick stretch, that doesn't really do anything, right? But if you hold it and you get rid of the stretch reflex and the muscle finally figures out, it says, oh, okay, I can relax and let go now. Uh, okay, that takes like 30 or more seconds to really happen to get an effective stretch. So that's rule number three. Um, never stretch an injured muscle. If you strained a hamstring going up the stairs or you, you tried to run or, or something and you strained a calf or a hamstring, the natural tendency is to stretch that muscle because it's so tight. But what they're finding out is that the muscle fibers are so damaged that if you stretch them, you're just irritating the muscle even more. So if you've injured a muscle, just leave it alone. It will go back and heal on its own and the muscles will, fibers will line up again. Um, and then when it's cured, then you can try to get that range of motion back. And as I said already, don't just try to stretch a cold muscle. It doesn't work. Think of, um, uh, of muscles, okay, as we know, you probably heard, is more, more like an elastic band, very stretchy, but put that elastic band outside on a 30 degree day for a couple hours and then try to stretch it, right? That's what it's like. It doesn't really work out too well. So if you keep these simple rules in mind for stretching, you're going to do just fine. So uh, be, now that we've got the rules out of the way, here's what we're going to cover today. We're going to start from the top of your head and work right down. And uh, I'm going to go right through each one of these six categories and I'll explain why each one is important and how they're interrelated. Uh, but we're gonna go neck, shoulders and chest, back, forearms uh, and arms. This is very important. And then this is the extra kind of one today. We're gonna go beyond the upper body and do some hip flexors and calves, all right? And I will tell you, I, I was finding my diagrams for this presentation and I absolutely love this one because I am a just a geek when it comes to the anatomy stuff and this was so well done I'm like oh my gosh I have to use this and she happens to be doing the perfect stretch that I want so this is a very important one people don't do this and I want to explain how to correctly do this exercise <laughs> excuse me uh, the stretch I should call it so you can see that she's doing she's sitting 
in a seated position, you want to drape the hand across over the top to the opposite side of the head and gently pull the neck down, okay? Now, you're going to do this obviously in both directions. You want to hold that gently and slowly for 30 seconds. And here's the big warning on this one. Again, I love this diagram because it shows the actual muscles that she's stretching. Um, what happens at the end of the stretch, the neck muscles are very susceptible to tweaking. If you've ever tweaked your neck and you can't turn your head for two days, you know what I'm talking about, right? So at the end of the stretch, if you visualize her, she's held at that position for 30 seconds, I'm going to slide the hand to the other side of the head and manually straighten my head out, right? So I don't want to just let go and let my neck snap straight again. It's like, yeah, just, you can almost feel those muscles clenching up again, right? So gently move. There's nothing quick and rapid about stretching, all right? So we're gonna do that for both sides. And, um, that's, and first of all, I love this stretch because it does feel really good. And I strongly encourage you to do something like this. Do that stretch I just showed you in multiple directions. I do it like at a 45 degree angle, forward, 45 degree angle, the other side going forward. And, and then this, as you can see, this, uh, this image right here showing you can gently pull your head down so like your chin to your chest as you see this image right here. So this is gonna stretch your neck in all directions, right? It's a great one to start off with. And then you wanna do this. This is a little more dynamic because if you think about it, Aside from maybe a difficult intersection while you're driving, very seldom do we have our shoulders looking forward and our neck 90 degrees to the side. We just don't do that motion very often. So like I said at the beginning, if you don't do it, you lose it, okay? That muscle will tighten up or go away and you won't be able to turn that. So if you gently turn from side to side, you wanna maybe hold it for a couple of seconds. This is, this is not really a stretch. This is more, I would call, I would classify this as a mobility type exercise to keep that good solid range of motion in the neck muscles, all right? Just looking all the way from side to side, try not to turn the shoulders, right? So you want all the movement coming in the neck. That's gonna lead us into this one. And this one comes with a definite warning. This is our last neck stretch, if you will. This she is doing, as the circle implies there, she is doing a complete neck circle, right? Big, long range of motion. So we're basically going through the motion of all those stretches we just did in a continuous pattern. Now, here's the warning on this one. Do not do this one standing up. Please do it seated because some you, you, what you'll find if you do this, and let's say I, I recommend you do about 10 circles in each direction, you can get very dizzy, all right? So please make sure you're seated. Don't try to do this standing, all right? Um, and it, just, it feels really good to get the blood flowing in there, get the synovial fluid that's in each of the joints, actually inside the joints, you get that fluid moving. And you're gonna find that after that series we just went through, your head and neck feel really good. You feel mobile, like you can turn and, and you're not stiff and, and again. So again, all of these things that we just went through can be done seated as, as the vast majority of these stretches can be. There's a couple we need to be standing, we'll get to at the end. All right, so that's the next stretches. You, you don't need to do a lot more beyond what I just showed you here. And if need be, uh, I'm, uh, this, this, record, this presentation is being recorded and I can certainly make these slides available to whoever needs it, I'm, no problem with that, right? So let's move on to the shoulder. Again, this is a good one where you can just sit, sit in your chair. And we often don't, one of those things that, hey, how often during regular life do you do this motion? You don't. We don't stretch out the muscles in the back of our shoulders very often. So what this one is, is just facing forward. I like to put the opposite hand behind my elbow. As you can see, she's kind of doing it there. I would move that hand back a little bit. And you just pull it across your chest and you can really feel that nice stretch on the back of the shoulder, right? The backs of the shoulders are one of those areas, especially if you do a lot of typing, a lot of work in front of a computer screen, it tightens up a lot, right? And again, that all the stuff feels really good once you start moving those muscles like they're supposed to again, all right? So you obviously do that both sides, 30 seconds each. You might wanna do it a couple of times if you've spent quite a bit of time that day seated in one position, all right? Here's a great stretch. Now I can tell you right now, a lot of people can't do this one. If you have really poor shoulder mobility, uh, very tight triceps, for example, 
you are going to have trouble with a little bit of trouble with this one. Um, so what you do is you reach behind your head like you're going to scratch your back, all right, the top of your neck. Reach across with the other hand as this individual does, and you kind of want to pull back and push back and down. So you're going to feel it in your triceps, the bat is the back of your arm, and you're going to feel it through your rotator cuff. You're going to feel it through everything. It's a really good overall stretch. And the other thing I like about this is it goes back to what actions do we do day in and day out? Well, we don't do a lot of them like this. How often do you really reach and stretch overhead besides maybe a yawn in the morning? That's about it, okay? So, so if you think about it, this is a very important one to make sure that you get done, all right? So yeah, uh, and follow the same pattern. Um, if you find, by the way, I should have said this at the beginning, if you find that you have a muscle group that's particularly tight, then feel free to do this two or three times for the 30 second holds, right? Um, because we want, because here's a, another general rule about stretching. I know it's a, a tangent here, but it's important. Um, it depends on how old you are. Some people are hyper flexible. Some people are not. Women tend to be more flexible than men. All right. Now, that being said, some people aren't going to be able to do these types of stretches at all. You're going to be have limitations. Right. But other people, they won't feel they won't, they'll do this stretch. You see this uh, in this image right here, this gentleman, and they won't even feel it because they're so hypermobile. But if you've had rotator cuff surgery, shoulder surgery, you may not be able to do this stretch at all. So everyone's going to vary in their successes. But the point is, we are not here to become gymnasts, right? The point of flexibility work, um, again, especially if you're over 30, over 40, you have to keep what you've got and make sure you don't lose that range of motion. Why? What does that lead to? As you age, if you lose range of motion, you are much, much more susceptible to injury, uh, slip and fall type things. You know, as people get much, much older, obviously hip fractures are quite common. But if you're flexible and mobile, you're able to maybe get that hand underneath you to break the fall. Maybe you're able to pull that foot in underneath you if you slip, right? All those things are very, very important uh, and, and they contribute to a long lasting health. But the goal is let's keep what we've got. Don't let any more of this slip away because as we age, what happens to the muscles is we get more and more collagen in there, right? Instead of muscle fibers and collagen doesn't like to stretch too much. Okay. That's why we get stiffer and stiffer as we age because muscle mass is replaced with stiffer collagen and we don't have that range of motion anymore. So it's very important to keep what you've got. Um, here's a great stretch. Uh, again, a lot of people won't be able to do this one, but it's it's excellent. You can you can try this if you cannot lock your fingers. Like you see this image here, you can see the exact muscles being stretched. The anterior deltoid that is the front of your shoulders. You're stretching your biceps in there. A lot of you're hitting a lot of muscles that are getting stretched. But some people say, hey, I I can't lock my fingers behind my back like that. It just doesn't work. Well, then you can do one arm at a time against a wall, right? And that kind of stretch, like maybe. I like to do a version of this where I'm holding onto a railing, right? So my fingers aren't together like this. I'm holding onto a railing and then I just lean forward a little bit and step forward. So I feel that stretch right on those red outlined muscles that you see in this diagram. All right, really good, awesome stretch. Um, again, it's one of those muscles, if you think about positioning during a work day in front of a computer, we don't use, the, what happens is the front of the shoulders can become very, very tight because they're sitting in a constant position. This muscle that you see outlined in red can get extremely tight. And this type of stretch becomes very important so we don't lose that range of motion. We start to have you know, hunched shoulders where the shoulders don't like to pull back nice and straight. If you picture like a military you know, soldier type standing upright and straight, we lose that over time if these muscles become tight. We don't want that, all right? So that's, um, that's a very, it's a great stretch right there. All right, here's some other great ones. I like this one a lot because this is the last of our shoulder stretches, but you can do this in any doorway. One arm at a time, as you see on the person on the left, the, with the B over her head there, and then the person with the A, um, there you basically make a kind of a T motion with your elbows at 90 degrees and press your forearms into the door frame. Right, it's an outstanding rotator cuff stretch. Why is that important? 
Well, because the I know very few people in life, especially like I said, I'm I'm, I'm in my fifties. Very few people who do not have shoulder issues, right? The shoulder is frankly not a very particularly well designed joint. Uh, it does like to get injured a lot, and this is a type of stretch that's going to keep that at a minimum. The rotator cuff itself, those four muscles that allow you to throw stuff and externally and internally rotate your arm, they're very um, oddly designed and susceptible to tearing. Okay, so um, this stretch right here will isolate the rotator cuff very well. So I love this stretch. Uh, if you do any kind of sports, right, if you're a runner, if you are uh, play softball, anything along those lines, this is a really good one to have. Runners tend to be extremely tight. Uh, particularly the upper body because it's not used and is a very repetitive motion, as you know. Um, they need to do this stretch quite a bit. And of course, if you're doing any sport that involves throwing or catching or anything like that, like tennis or hitting and striking, um, you need to have healthy rotator cuffs or you're going to have that one day where maybe you're a little dehydrated, a little fatigued, and you strain your rotator. And that stuff, that stuff does not tend to go away without surgery, unfortunately, if you do a complete tear. All right, so that's the final shoulder stretch. And this is, a, this is a hugely important one. I mean, the percentage of population in the US who have back issues is very significant. In fact, I know that I've seen the number that it's over 50%, probably closer to 60% of people in the United States will have some back trouble through the course of their life. All right, and that percentage might even be higher uh, as we become more and more inactive as we age. So this is a really good one. You can see, uh, you could obviously do this as you're seated there. I tend to do this all the time if I'm getting warming up for a workout or, or warming up for some type of physical activity. I actually can feel, I'm not sure if it's great or not, feel a nice little, um, uh, it's like cracking your knuckles. I get a little movement in my lower back and I pop and everything feels loose and long. I'm not saying you should push it that far and try, <laughs> try to get a pop in your back, but I'm saying a, a nice gentle turn, as you can see, she's got one arm braced, on one side of the chair, the other's around the other side, and you just gently, and again, no jerking motions, never jerking motions with stretching, a nice slow pull, and you kind of look with your eyes over your shoulder, because that will pull your head, which pulls your neck, which pulls your shoulders, and lets you get a better turn. If you do sports like golf, uh, any kind of strenuous sports that involves turning and twisting like uh, softball or tennis or anything like that, this is a great, stretch to keep that mobility through the, your, your lumbar, through your thoracic vertebrae, that is all down your spine and all your oblique muscles. We want to keep them in, with a very uh, pliant range of motion. Um, so this is the ideal stretch for that. And I like it. Notice that this is not going to work very well on a chair that has, you know, wheels or anything like that, a, a mobile chair. You want to have a fixed a, a fixed base that you're sitting on, okay? That's the only kind of caveat on that one. This is one of my favorite, it looks very, very simplistic, I know that, but it's one of my favorite back stretches, okay? Um, what you do is you, as you can see, lock your arms behind your head, and you wanna think of dropping one elbow to the floor while you reach for the ceiling with the other one. And you're going to get a stretch in your lower back, and you're going to stretch the muscles that really don't get a lot of attention that they deserve, but they're the biggest muscle in your upper body. That's your lat muscles, right? Those are the big latissimus dorsi, right? Those are the big, big, thick mat, back, back muscles that kind of, they cover most of your back, and they actually wrap around the front a little bit. And when you look at the uh, image of the person on the right, and the elbow that's reaching up to the ceiling, that's actually gonna stretch out those lat muscles. As well, and also stretch up, there's a whole bunch of muscles that connect your hips to your ribs and your lower back is involved. There's a lot of connections in there that you need to spend time on. And reaching that elbow for the ceiling while the other one's pulling down is an excellent way to do it. So then that's, again, a nice, comfortable, easy one to do in the in your chair. Um, so you know what? Before I even go on, the question might come up: How often do you should you do this? Um, and I should again preface the whole workout with this whole stretching workout, if you want to call it that. Um, it should be done a couple times a day. Um, I would strongly recommend if I'm in an office setting, course of a long day, a standard work day, 
Number one, never sit still for any ever over an hour. You don't, you lose productivity. Uh, studies have shown this, that it's not the person who's cranking away at their desk for three hours straight who's most productive. That's not what they're seeing. What they're seeing is people who work for 45, 50 minutes and get up and walk around for 10, all right, then they, those are the people who are actually come up with more creative solutions. They're more productive. And it also gives you, I would walk around for five minutes, come back to my desk. I would go through this routine and I would do that multiple times per day. That way you're going to always be fresh, always be uh, creative and all the blood will be flowing and not, you won't be stagnant and you know, you start to get fatigued and run down. So this will keep you fresh and energetic and, and contributing to the, whatever needs to be done. Uh, this is the last one here. I know it looks like someone on an airplane getting ready for impact, but um, it's really just a nice, simple lower body stretch. You let your upper body weight hang down underneath you, and you you know kind of wrap your arms underneath your knees and give it a slow, steady pull. This is uh, our, if you're sitting in a chair. This is probably one of the simplest lower back stretches that you could hope for. And it's um, it's going to be very very effective. So uh, that that's the stretches. A quick review here of the of the back. All right. So we have the twist. Right. We're going to get that plane. We're going to get side to side lateral plane, and then we get a front to back plane. If you notice that we're hitting all these different angles as we do this. Okay. So let's talk about this. is really important. Let's talk about your hands. Again, carpal tunnel syndrome, if you've ever had it, you know how uncomfortable it is, the numbness, the tingling. And then you, it, it's really one of the few ways to get rid of it is uh, you can try PT. And I know a lot of people, oh, I want to go to a physical therapist for, for uh, carpal tunnel syndrome. And most more often than not, it doesn't work, right? It's too late. The inflammation is, is in the joint and surgery is very, very often required. So uh, this is very simple stretches. This is up and down. All right, you're going to grab the fingers and pull them back towards your face. Now, your arm can be locked, your elbow can be bent, doesn't matter on this one. Uh, people will often do that because it does feel better when they pull to see the first one on the left hand side there, pulling the fingers back towards your face or your body feels pretty good, right? Because that muscle doesn't stretch very often. The one that people don't do very often is the one pressing down, the one you see on the right side of your screen, where you're taking some pressure bending your wrist down at 45 degrees and slowly press don't overdo that one don't uh, you know don't try, try to extend them back further than you should again this is one of those examples some people they're going to bend your their wrist back and they literally come very close to touching their fingers to their forearm please don't try to do that um i for example i'm, I'm sitting here stretching this as i'm speaking and i'm very lucky to get to 90 degrees very much like the diagram itself. So I'm not going much past that. Don't force this. Remember the rule, uncomfortable, not painful. All right. And here's another version of this. I like this one a lot. Uh, you just find any wall in the office. Um, and I like the, I really like these angles that this person is doing here in this image. And because you, you really don't do this back to the, my favorite saying, you don't do this in everyday life, right? The, unfortunately, these muscles get ignored. Um, and they tighten up, especially if you're doing tons and tons and tons of typing, which is so common now, all right? So that it's a really good stretch against the wall. I love the one on the far right with the fingers are pointing down and you try to get your wrist towards the ceiling. You would be surprised how difficult it is to, when the, when the arms are at shoulder height, like that image, how hard it is to get the wrists in that position don't force it. Don't tear anything. Nice and slow. Go to your range of motion, not what somebody else is doing. All right. <clears throat> Next. Now we're going to jump to the lower body. Okay. The hip flexor. Why did I include the hip flexor of all the muscles of the lower body? By the way, there are literally thousands and thousands of stretches we could cover. I'm doing, with this presentation, I'm doing my best to find the ones that give you the best bang for the buck and the ones that are most likely to be to need attention, and your hip flexors is one of those muscle groups. Um, so why? Because picture this, as you sit there right now watching this, if you happen to be seated, you know that your hip flexor is in a relaxed position, and it's in a bent position, right? You're not using it. What happens, and this happens to cyclists a lot who spend hours and hours and hours on a bicycle seat in training, their hip flexors shorten. 
they actually shorten and it's very difficult for them to get in the position of you see that you see in this diagram. So one foot straight out in front of you and you can see the shin is just about 90 degrees, the, the other leg back behind you and you're, he is stretching the hip flexor that's facing us, that's closest to us. And you gently push the hips forward over that front knee as to as far as your range of motion allows no further. Really important to stretch this because if you do not stretch your hip flexor, it will tighten up and shorten and you will injure it. And when you injure hip flexor, oh, it, it's miserable. I've done it before. Uh, stairs become miserable. You forget running. You cannot run. You cannot jog. Um, it's very, very difficult to do. So uh, what's even better though is this one. Look at, I found a, a real physical image here. This is a woman who's got... Um, uh, a chair that she can use, and you can see the same thing. Leg out in front, 90 degrees, back leg, stretching that hip flex. A really good image there of what this might look like in the real world, all right? Uh, the last one here, we wanna talk about the calves. I always include calves, and for this very important reason. It is one of the most common injuries, particularly among men over age 40, uh, Achilles tendon tear. If you know anyone who's ever tore their Achilles tendon, you'll know that it is required surgery. It is months of recovery. It is miserable. Okay. So this is, there are two types of stretches we need to do for the lower body because there are two muscles in your calf. One's on the outside, that big diamond shaped thing. That's the gastroc. When you think of a calf muscle, you think that, of that, that thing that has all kinds of striations on people who run or jog a lot or, or, or you know, bodybuilders and stuff, that's on the outside. When your knee is locked, like you see the image here, you're gonna get the outside muscle. I really like putting my toe up against a wall, like you see here, it puts that extra stretch on there and very slowly, do not overdo the stretch, take your time and move forward. And as you can see that they want you to pull yourself forward with this one. Uh, you may not be able to do that very much because your calves could be that tight. And if you don't do a lot of calf work, if you don't do a lot of stairs, if you don't uh, extend on your toes very often, then that muscle gets really tight. And that's what makes it so susceptible to injury, right? We're weight bearing on it all day long. And if that gets tight and then we suddenly do a very quick, quick motion, it can get hurt, right? So knee locked, foot up against the wall, and then you slowly move your hips towards the wall. The other half of that is this one, right? It doesn't detail the name of the muscle here, but that this is, you can see, I like to focus on the front foot. See how the knee is bent? Um, I tell people to do this. Put your foot about, oh, I don't know, eight to 12 inches away from the base of the wall. So this is not to scale here. And then try to touch the wall with your kneecap as you bend your knee and move forward. Right, really interesting, a very, very interesting challenge. But what this does, it gets the muscle underneath that you can't see, the one responsible for posture and standing for long periods of time. That's called the soleus, it doesn't really matter, but it's, it's a separate muscle and needs to be stretched separately. So knee locked is the outside, knee bent is the inside on the calf muscle. So, so there you go, we went top to bottom, right, on all these muscles. <clears throat> I'm gonna stop my screen share right now and go to the chat and see if we have any questions, right? I don't see any questions right there right now. So um, I, am, I am happy if you, if you have any questions you'd like to touch on, now is the time to do it. Um, and because we have a, just a couple minutes left here. So um, you know, uh, I'll ask our host if there's anyone, if she's seen any questions pop up or if anyone has anything else, but that is uh, honestly, again, I said there's thousands of stretches you could do this short summary, if you do this on a daily basis, you're gonna uh, cut off or you're gonna forestall uh, the risk of injury. You can 